So today I'm going to show you kind of a time lapse of uh, soldering these V40 PCBs up. So usually start with the uh, resistors. I once read somewhere you want to start with your uh, lowest items on the board first. So we're going to the resistors there, the resistor there, uh, and a few down here. We'll get those all soldered in. So uh, I'll be uh, kind of chopped up in the video because I'm going to pause it while I do things and then I'll explain. So here we go. All right, so I've got all the uh, resistors in. Got all these wires hanging out. So I'll uh, trim those off now and move on to the next part. All right, they're all trimmed off. Um, I'm going to start with my sockets now. So, the way I usually do these is I'll um, I'll just start with whichever one. But put them in. Sometimes you have little bent pins. Get it flipped over, like so. But I'll prop up like the other side of the board, just another socket like so. And then what I'll do, I probably won't show this, but I'll tack one, look at it, and then with it being held, if it's not flat, I can just heat that solder back up and push it flat. I try to get them as flat as I can. I mean, it doesn't hurt anything if there's a small micro gap underneath, but flatter the better. So I'll uh, give some updates periodically while I'm soldering these on. There's kind of the biggest part is all these sockets. So um, I'm not going to give you a whole list right now of all the ones you need. I think it's listed on my website somewhere. But also the board has all the sock or all the part numbers on it. So you'll you'll basic build figure it out. So. so I've got a few going. One thing to keep in mind is there's a a notch that's for the indicate the top of the chip there. So it's best to just always keep mindful that you keep those going towards the top. And if you can see some of my sockets, they're all they all have a pin count on them. So like that one says 16 if you can read it. But sometimes the number is upside down compared to the notch. So don't go off the number, just go off the notch. Um, but one thing I should mention is you technically could solder just the components on. I like to socket them. Uh, I don't necessarily always buy brand new parts. I know, I know like my decoders here are brand new. But uh, it's a lot easier to change out a bad part when it's a socket compared to soldering it directly on there. So I've got a few more parts on there. So periodically the uh, soldering tip there gets uh, wore down. So I just file it down, not necessarily to a sharp point, just clean it up a little bit every now and then. So just keep going on the parts. So I've got all the little black ones on there. Um, usually want to double check and make sure you didn't miss any joints. You double check it multiple times. So the next I'm going to put in the socket for the processor. Now I happen to have some examples here. You, uh, something like this, you probably just want to throw away. It's probably not worth salvaging. Um, this one here, there's like one pin that's slightly bent, so I'll work, try to work that one in there. It can be a little difficult when the pins are not lined up on these sockets. Alright, so got it in there, went in pretty nice. You can see the little up arrow and a circle, and that goes, that's like your notch. So you will definitely want to put that in the right way. And then when I solder this, Kind of like the others, I'll solder one pin and then try to push it flat. But I usually go down like 
So I, I'm right-handed, so I'll kind of go down that row, then that row, then just turn it. The, and that's how I, that's how I do it. So I don't, uh, it's kind of a pain to try to solder over like that. So as you can see, I soldered the outside there and the inside here. And I'll just turn it and do it over and do the other side. All right, so that's all in there. And the next thing I'm going to do is the crystals. This one's actually labeled, so you're going to want the um, 14.31818. So I've got that there. And then the V40, I go with a 16 megahertz. It divides it by two, so we run at eight megahertz. Um, I do have some that are for 20 megahertz. And so I put a 40 megahertz crystal in there and it uh, it doesn't run very stable. I haven't very good luck with that one. So I've just been sticking with the eight megahertz one, which runs very stable. All right, so because these are not flat against the table surface. I've bent the pins a little for soldering. And that's what you can do if you forget something or you add something later that you wouldn't be able to do that with sockets, but with uh, resistors and that you can. And then I'm going to add the LED and the reset button. You know, on these LEDs, I used to have to look up which one was what on the wires. And I realized there's actually a flat spot on one side of the pins, and that's pin one, which goes into the uh, square hole there. Pin two is the round hole. Okay, and then I'll trim those wires off there and for the crystals. And then next I'm going to add my pin headers. So I'm going to cut this one. We need a a four pin and I usually push out that second pin over because it's not used. Uh, two pin here, a one pin there, then over here we need two that are uh, two by eight. So I'll cut these for that. Okay, I've got the pin headers in there. Now you can see you got like a speaker, ground, and five volt, and then I pull out the middle one. Some speakers actually have that one blocked off. That's why I pull it out. Otherwise, you won't be able to plug it in. The single pin, it can be a little hard to get it straight. And then we've got this one. This one's for the jumper. For the, uh, It has to do with the AEN pin and the acknowledge lines off the DMA controller. we got our headers over here. This one's for the keyboard. This one's for the uh, USB hard drive. So the next I'm going to do is the uh, power sockets. Um, now I did not, I had to design this footprint myself and I did not put in for that stud there. So I'll clip that stud, it's just plastic, I'll just clip it off. Oh, I've soldered them in there. These are a little bit bigger sockets or through holes I should say, not on the sockets. Um, there's like a tall side with plastic and just make sure that goes that way and that those are facing out. Now I explained this before, but I power it from the board, it, you know, so it can be run headless. And then I also will run it directly on a breadboard using this adapter, which has got all the labels. Um, you could put it in backwards by mistake, but on the chip side, the, all your address and data lines are over here. So if you just look at the labels, I can't see them in the camera. Just make sure you put all your address and data lines on the chip side, and then everything else goes on the other side, and you'll be fine. You won't break anything by plugging it in backwards, but you but once you start wiring things up, then you could break things. Um, but that's why I power it from the board, and so it can be run without uh, plugging it into like a backplane. Also, because the very top pin, the power good pin, ties in through the uh, reset resistor setup here. And that makes it so that when you turn the power on, it actually boots up and you don't have to hit the reset button to uh, 
every time you turn it on. So, all right, so the next thing is my zip lock socket. Now, you, if you look at these, if you push this down, all the pins will bend one way. And I like to solder them when they're in straight. So that'll just go right here in this. So you just want to put it in. So I just pushed it in. I've got it standing up. Make sure it's flat. Now you could do a just a regular ordinary socket here. If you were not planning to prototype with this, then it wouldn't be a problem. It's just when I'm working with it, I'm always pulling the ROM out and making adjustments. And so this makes it very handy. You don't have to pry it out each time. All right, so it's all soldered. That should be it on the soldering. Um, just do another visual inspection. And then we'll move on to putting the chips in. All right, so I've got all the components here. Got our bracket. Now I usually put this on last, see the long screws. They actually protrude out the bottom and then when you uh, push in your chips, you're actually like starting to flex the board. Kind of don't like that. Bracket goes on last, so Got some LS 139s, three of them, 138s, four of them, a uh, LS 04 here, a jumper. Both our RAM chips are 512K and our 32K, our processor, and then uh, our uh, for our data bus, we got our transceiver here. And then I've got two latches for the address bus, one latch for the uh, for port 61, a uh, clock, and a clock divider, LS74, and a, what is it, an 8, 8284 for the clock. And this, you could actually almost leave these off if you were poor, didn't want to buy them. But then your these control your speaker and your timer. So you definitely want to get the correct speeds on those. Um, eight megahertz is not the correct speed. You want that divided down from that one four dot three one eight one eight. So just start putting them in. You can see every socket is labeled, and on the these ones I actually have the address and the port numbers on them as well. So we'll just go ahead and start putting those in. I'm gonna part way through this. Um, something to mention. If your pins are like expanded out, what I'll typically do is just gently push them on the table so they bend together to bend them in. If you push one at a time, they just end up all out of line with each other. It's not bad, but it's just kind of a trick I've learned. All right, so we've got all that pushed in. Now, see there's notches that always goes towards the top. This is like a dot. That's always pin one. So just double check, make sure none of them are in upside down. Occasionally I've put them in upside down and haven't destroyed anything yet, but you definitely don't want to do that. It could cause damage. The processor, got a little notch, that's where pin one is. Little dot. So next we're gonna put in the, the ROM. I'm gonna put on the speaker and put on the bracket. All right, so I've got the speaker. Now, what I found was kind of interesting when I was designing this the speaker is actually connected to the wire coming off the timer connected to ground and there's and this is connected to five volts um got our rom got our bracket on there now we're gonna go ahead and test it plug it into our board with power supply and we got our usb drive here now it's just connect with a ribbon cable or you can use little jumper wires, but the pinout that's on the board is identical to the pinout here. I put a little line for the IRQ, the IRQ6 and IRQ1 up here, indicating that it's a active low, not an active high. Um, it comes up here through the LSO4. And that was the big change. This is the, uh, March board. I uh, started putting a date stamp on them, but this is the this is the most up to date. It's very stable. I'm gonna give, show you a test run here. In a minute. So when you hook up your power, 
uh, if you don't know this already, put the there's four black wires here. They go next to each other. Those are your grounds. Uh, I've got our USB drive plugged in. Now we're gonna just plug it into the board, and we'll uh, do a test run. I got it plugged in. Turned off by light. I had it there for soldering, so it might be a little darker. Um, same board I've been using. Uh, the LCD is what I'm using for my video output. It's in the BIOS. If you download the BIOS file, you can see how it's put together. It's like on port. I think I want to say 0440 is the base port. It's communicated through this uh, parallel port. It's the 8255. This one probably the neck version, the 71055. Got my extra ROMs here. Just when I'm burning, I kind of rotate through those. Uh, the next step will be to the keyboard. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to put this up to the serial port that's built into the processor. I haven't got that far yet. So here's our test run. Oh, I put the light in correctly. If your uh, board boots up, but your light don't come in, just unsolder it, put a new one in there the correct direction. We're starting DOS. Um, in my auto exact, I have it run files that I test. It's quicker than burning a new ROM when I'm trying to prototype some code. So, installed out for a reason. Let's uh, try rebooting it. Should have installed out. Definitely need a lot of work on the code. I double check something, I'll get back. All right, um, that'll work in now. Sometimes when I first build them, you have to kind of wiggle the chips a little bit, kind of work it in. See if you can see that it's booting up. Starting DOS. Now in my BIOS, I don't enable the interrupt for the drive, but I just had the auto exec run this code for I call it int. And it enabled the USB interrupt. So what'll happen is if I pull the drive out, so I get to this one hand in, it'll say drive disconnected. And then plug it back in. It says drive connected. I want to say it's going to reboot right here. Yeah. So it detected it, connected it through the interrupt pin, and a reboot. So that demonstrates. So that's why I had to make this new board where the interrupt was inverted to an active low, not an active high. So if you order one of these off eBay, um, you'll be getting the, the most up-to-date current one that actually works. So there you go. Thanks for uh, checking this out. Hopefully it's not too choppy through the whole video. Um, 